Eagle News Network. It's on. It's on. Okay. How you all doing? Okay, we're going to start this. What what it was um, for 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 this portion of our information session for the compressed calendar. As you recall, the last time we met, we had a few uh, questions that um, that folks had submitted. And so what the Vice Chancellor's Office did was to summarize responses to those questions in this document. And um, so the second part, what, what the second forum was, is uh, for us to look at uh, look at these questions, I mean these uh, responses, and if you had additional questions, uh, then you can address it to uh, the uh, representatives here on the uh, district uh, academic calendar committee. So generally that's what we're trying to accomplish today and then uh, uh, we will archive those and then uh, it will be given to our consultant, John Mullen, who will include those in the package that goes to the State Chancellor's Office in July. So, Brandy, you um, I just think, I'm trying to remember from the, the first forum, I think that the Saturday um, inclusion in the schedule was a concern. Um, it's not required that any one person work on a Saturday. In fact, if I remember as an adjunct, it probably be one of my first choices um, so that you could work at multiple campuses. So I think the fear of full-time faculty members working six days a week I don't, I mean, it's in our contract that it's a five-day work week, so you choose those five days. No, those five days are also going to change depending on the contract because that's the negotiations, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have to work longer days. Right now, we have six hours and one day to work, right? That will change. It's a negotiation. We don't know if we will work seven hours a day or something, right? That will change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my, I think I got that brought that in, I think the initial concern. Mm -hmm. And so I think my concern around that was, I just want to make sure that we thought about all the contingencies around this before, sure. I, just, a, just a question, right? Sure. But also thinking there may be some programs in the future that may be housed more as a Saturday or weekend type program. Right. And will we ever have a full-time faculty member where that would be pretty much their primary uh, load? And that's where I want to be, make sure we're thoughtful. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the Los Rios have um, like wording in their, contract right with a full-time faculty if somebody wants to work on full-time like Saturdays right they will get another two one or two days off right but they calculate differently how if you work uh, Saturday what percentage you get and stuff like that. that yeah and that means that's the negotiation item right our union need to negotiate right if somebody wants to do that that being the case it's almost impossible that we go for five six days a week to five hours the union is not going to do that, so it's, it's still going to be some variation on five days. Uh, five a week. Day, yeah, and whether or not you make Saturday will probably be up to the faculty member, not to the. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, well, a question came up at the graduation committee meeting mm -hmm. before spring break um, because they noted that this year they're having some difficulty scheduling <clears throat> practices and other things because graduation is held during finals. Mm -hmm. Will that be different? Under yeah, because it's going to be, the, uh, we are not going to have a finals end on Wednesday anymore. It will always end on Friday or Saturday. That means our graduation is going to be the last day, right? It's not going to be like in the middle of the finals anymore. Yeah, because they, they need um, a practice and some other things where they are not, <coughs> I, I said you're going to miss people. If you do a practice on that Friday morning, which is just the second day of finals this year on May 15th, they said, oh yeah, we're gonna, I said, you can't have them miss their final to come to graduation. Yeah, 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 valid. So it, it's really hard to have any kind of finals on the day of graduation. So that could be on a different Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would be. Human college is doing starting this semester. Yeah, no, but maybe not. because it needs, because they the changed practice it. needs. They changed it again. Again. Really? Because yeah. the board said no. So they went back to Friday. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at having it on 
day where there's no finals so that students can do that stuff. So, I don't know how many people saw the YCAFT newsletter last month, but it sounds like YCFAT is adamantly against going to an impress calendar. And I know that some of the concerns expressed in their newsletter were misperceptions of what was going to be happening. Have you guys had a chance, or has the committee had a chance to look over that thoroughly and see how much of their concerns are misperceptions <coughs> or misconceptions? And how much of it is a valid concern? It is. It came after our meeting. Okay. And I'll send that to Brian. I follow up with Brian, and uh, he is, in fact, he's addressing that at his uh, forum. forum today. But he did send a letter to YCAFT itemizing some of the misconceptions that were inherent in that, in that report. And the discussions, you know, is being followed up today in the uh, in the forum. But one of the main things that was there was there they, they, they didn't really uh, they didn't appreciate or understand the role of uh, the uh, the block schedule in you know in their assignments. And their conception of that was that uh, it will affect the um, assignment of some adjunct faculty in teaching on Fridays. And so Brian, you know, he, he made a detailed response. And I will share that with you if you want to, to some of those issues that they had. Okay. And, he, and the other thing also is that because of that, I mean, it has created a whole lot of confusion on their campus, particularly among their adjuncts. So they had to send for John Mullen to come in today to help run their forum and to answer some of them. Has Pam um, indicated any concern? She, at she's Senate? definitely any concern. She, a couple of times, has said that they won't be able to teach one day a week for three hours. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think each time she said that, both Tal and I have said that's not accurate, that yes. will still be a possibility. Yeah. But me saying things doesn't convince Pam anymore, so <laughs> she has to hear from somebody else. No, but the thing, <laughs> no, the thing is, what, yes. I think there are some issues in that, that newsletter, Matt. Those are issues not about the calendar. Those are the issues about the scheduling. And, they have right. yeah. and people need people. to understand that scheduling issue is different than compressed calendar issue. Yeah. Right. Our classes are going to be longer, right? That's the scheduling part, right? That's They talk about block schedule, that's Yuba College. We always do did this, right? Yeah. And we always have scheduling yeah. guidelines. That's Yuba College, they are doing calling this one as a block schedule, right? To me, what is the information is coming out, like if we are not sharing the right information. But personally, I notice and the calendar committee, we don't have the adjunct person who represents attend regularly, and and they don't attend regularly, and they don't send the information, right? But we try to send the information what we talked about it, and like today, if you guys look at it, we don't have any adjunct faculty here, right? And how we are going to share that information, how they will get the information. I don't know personally what we can do, about this, okay? But the information, a lot of the information is about the schedule, which one is not part of the calendar. Same thing, there was uh, some issues about the surveys when I brought it up uh, about the surveys we are going to do, and there was some questions came up about the bus uh, things and stuff, like bus schedules, and the same thing from Pam, there was a question about ECE classes offering once a night, right? once a day, and I said that's the scheduling issue, that's not the issue for the calendar. But, but beyond that, the guidelines that we're putting together for the compressed calendar will allow yes. oh, right. one day a week for three yeah. hours, for, well, right. the equivalent to three hours, it won't be three hours to be Right, it will be three plus. So uh, I don't know if we can say that about Yuba, but the ones that we've put together will allow. 
right? I think they, Brian, but we, I brought it up last time, Brian is going to work on that. Okay. So Brian, because I, feel I brought it up because there was a concern from YCFA about the bus schedule at Yuba, right? Because, and, uh, and I, because it came up at YCFA and they told me to take it to the committee, I did. And then I said, that's not the schedule, uh, the calendar issue, it's more about the schedule issue. Then he's going to look at what if they can do, talk about the bus schedule. I don't know, we didn't look at the bus schedule here, personally. Right? I don't know if that's going to affect us. Well, maybe that, like you said, should be something done in scheduling committee and we yeah. have to choose wisely what classes start at 7 and 7.30 or then yeah. offset the bus schedule. Yeah, and we need to be careful about that. Same thing, there was a lot of concerns from Claire Lake. Mm -hmm. But when I was reading those concerns, to me, that was like not presenting the accurate information to Claire Lake. And a lot of the concerns was, I don't want to take a Saturday class. I don't want to teach Saturday class, right? We are just, we are offering Saturday classes right now too, right? It's up to the students if they want to take it or not, right? We are not going to shift everything <coughs> on Saturdays. And we are not going to make everybody to teach on Saturdays, right? And, and it's not like we are going to have a lot of Saturday classes. Saturday class can be one class, right? which one as a three hours of instruction can count as one instructional day. And there is a lot of, about the contract, right? They need to negotiate and that part is not started yet. Because there are a lot of things like how many hours of day is going to be, that will change, right? If that change, we need to talk about a flex. Right now we have a 16.8 because eight days of flex. Right now, eight days of flex is 48 hours because eight times six, right? We have a six hours day. If we are going to have a seven hours day, is we are going to have a 50 days of, 56 hours of flex, right? That means that need to be discussed in the DCAS Senate, right, at the union, right? That kind of stuff. That part is not done yet. That's not our part. There's gonna be a flex summit followed by a flex retreat, which will start to talk about those ideas within the next month and a half. So. Before that flex retreat, right, to me, right, they need to, firstly, we need to figure out what's the contract look like, right? If we are now starting that discussion, that flex retreat is not going to do anything, right? Do we want to have 56 hours of flex? Do we want to have 48 hours of flex? That not, will change our calendar too. So, so I, I'm not going to agree or disagree, but that is really awkward where it has to go first because ideally the Senate should make recommendations to YCFA rather than YCFA negotiating and then seeing if the Senate's are willing to sign on. Because professional development is 10 plus 1, it should start in the Senate is, since I'm Senate President, is what I should say out loud at least. I'm not totally convinced that that's the case. I really think everybody needs to be at the table together working on a common solution. But I, I would feel awkward, and I think Greg would as well, with somebody sitting at a negotiating table and then telling the Senate this is what's going to happen because they can't do that. No, no. Firstly, why is they need to negotiate the num like how many hours of a day is going to be in a... That part, that part, yes. Right? Yes. Then you can figure out what is the flex is going to be. Okay. Right? That'll, you that'll cannot work. figure out the flex without you knowing if one, uh, one day is going to be seven hours or eight hours, right? right? And then you can figure out the flex, yeah. right? That means that part needs to be done by YCFA. Then Senate can negotiate, <laughs> okay, we want 4, 56 or 48. If we change or that. 32. Or 32. You ready for 32? But th that, <laughs> will change, that will change over 16.8 to 16.6. Right, understood. That will change 16.6. That will change all the scheduling guidelines. Everything will change. So you've got to be careful. That. that means we need to make sure where we are right now, we've developed everything by 16.8. And I don't know what 16.8 means, right? Why we went 0.8, why not 0.6? 16.6. Right. I don't know. Maybe Al knows. We will get more money. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so no, because if you guys look at this second Nobody point, has 16.6 or 8 on this. No, no there is 16.6. I didn't see it. Definitely 0.6. Oh, yeah. I didn't see it. On the first one, 16.5. There's a lot of 16.5. I feel like 16.5. Yeah. 
There is two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't have my glasses on, so if one of those fives is a six, it's There's not going to There's no 16.8. I don't know why we choose 16.8. See, there is no 16.8. I have no idea why we choose those. But it wasn't the same, right? I will say, though, when we were building the block schedule off of our current guidelines and rolling into the 16.8 multiplier, it fit well. Because we already had courses starting on the hour and on the half hour and it allowed it to fit in there and I think if we went down to 16.6 it wouldn't, it would be like starting on the 35, 45 and it, it would just look different. Yeah. Anything else? Any? So what's the next step with this? The next step is that uh, we will forward these additional questions to the Vice Chancellor's office and then that will be part of the um, packet that will be forwarded to the Chancellor's office in July. I, I don't know if we, if those, uh, Chris, you wrote down a couple of questions. Did you get the answer on that sheet? Well, all the I, answers? I appreciate uh, a response to those questions. And I think those questions have may come up from other people. Yes. Uh, I'm glad there's at least an official response to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if we will go back to the answer to everything. So the only question today I, I pulled is why 16.8? Yes. So, and then the YCAFD concern. The information she just passed out does say that students are generally in favor of that. That's a generic statement about students statewide. Has there been any feedback from student e a ASWCC or ASYC or ASCLC about this? The surveys. We, we, we are going to do the surveys. Our the surveys are coming next week. Yes. Okay. And the, uh, next Question. week, uh, faculty and staff will get surveys uh, through email, right? Okay. But the students, I think Al is talking to Molly to pick a uh, sample, sample right? <coughs> and uh, to uh, distribute to those classes, right? Plus, we are going to put some surveys in the registration, a and r and the a library, and the WAM. If other students still wants to do those surveys, they can do that. Right? And Al is working on that part. Because we choose next week and week after because the registration starts. And, and the week after, there are going to be registration for the new students. And we want to get the input from the new students too, right? Who are coming, right? And maybe, I don't know what they will give us the input, right? But at least we want to get the input. And after those surveys, when we will get the input, right, then we are going to do the application. And I don't know if we have a time for that or not. The surveys that will be online? Yeah, so there is going to be online plus paper surveys. Online for the faculty and staff. Students, we will put online plus, we are going to have a hard copies, we are going to take a sample of classes to distribute these surveys in those classes, plus there are going to be surveys at the NR, WAM, and the okay. tutoring center. Tom, uh, yes. So with the surveys, is there any consideration for like a distance education of the online students? And how this may be impacted for like, online students? I think we, we talked about like for online students, we are going to put these surveys for online, and Molly is going to take a sample, okay. right? And that sample, if there is a one online class, right, that they're going to send the you can online. Send the hyperlink. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's probably the easiest venue to, to, send it, to send it out on. That's why Molly is going to pick like morning, afternoon, evening classes. Like that's yeah. Al is talking to her. Can you move the camera? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said. <laughs> <laughs>
So it's great, that, it's great that we're getting the WCC Local Student Survey. Is this the same survey that we use for Yuba College as well as Clear Lake? Yes. Okay. It's the same survey. All right. And the same thing for Calusa too. We're holding a second forum for Clear Lake next Tuesday. So um, they have the most concerns, but it was also the most, um, I don't want to say misinformed, but the information I think was presented um, not as accurately as, as it actually is. So. Anything yeah. else you guys think? How do you think the uh, an online survey or paper survey student would make informed conclusion on the questions? Because we are learning a lot and still a lot of things it's hard to understand. First time if you give them survey questions. I think there is going to be description on the top, like explaining what is the compressed calendar is about, right? And all that's going to be back, right? There was it. There yeah, is at least the sample topic. surveys had had some introductory material. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. The introduction, right, was the compressed calendar is about. So that's a really good point. But there's a, a few paragraphs here. Have those been shared with uh, ASWCC maybe for dissemination to them? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, Jennifer was sending this uh, campus-wide. Okay. I think she's already done. Campus -wide staff? So campus-wide, faculty and staff. Okay. And then okay. the students. And then the students, the students we will have uh, Sean help us to distribute it. But then we are also going to put these hard copies in the uh, 700 buildings and then some in the 100 area there and upstairs here. In WAM, so can, sure. yeah. Great. Does the survey include information about how long the classes would be meeting for? Because I know with my students, you know, two weeks less of class, but if you start saying classes are now going to be this many more minutes long, from my students' perspectives, they're like, really, I have to sit here for another 15 more minutes beyond what I'm currently. So, I don't, is it explain the length of the classes? No. I don't know if it does or not, but from a like, <laughs> well, yeah, That's like a three-unit lecture-only class, five extra minutes a class period. I mean, it's right. not like you're going to be there for an extra 45 minutes. Sure. I think the biggest impact will be the labs. You know, when we start looking at the 54 to 1 unit conversion factor and what does that translate to time? The, I think the biggest impact is going to be just the length of the day. Yeah. Right. Because we will be starting morning classes a little <coughs> earlier and more importantly evening classes, especially lab classes in the evening, won't be finishing until just before 10. Right. Now, yeah. historically, we've had years where we had, did have just regular classes going until 9.50, yeah. but we haven't done that for quite a while, so that the, the length of the day is going to be expanded, and that, that's why I, I think it's important to make sure we get that information, especially to our adjunct faculty, and get their input about that, because somebody who's used to teaching here in the evening and yeah. getting out of here at 8.45, it's going to be like so, 20 or something. Exactly. Yeah. But that'll be an impact. Yeah, true. I'm also, I'm hoping that that more instructors will consider going back to three or four day a week, depending on the three or four unit classes with the new. Because I think that it will be more attractive. That 50 minutes will be a little bit longer than 50 minutes, so it won't feel like you're tight some days but the uh, hour and 15 going to an hour and 20.